Welcome back ladies and gents. In this teaching video I'll be looking at 8.4 differentiating vectors. 8.4 represents chapter 8 section 4 of the Pearson A level maths applied maths year 2 textbook. I'm going to start this teaching video by going through some important facts for this particular section. R with the squiggle represents the position vector of the particle. V with the squiggle represents the velocity vector of the particle. A with the squiggle represents the acceleration vector of the particle. Now, if you take the position vector and you differentiate it, you get the velocity vector. So the velocity vector is the derivative of the position vector. This can be rewritten as r squiggle with a dot on top. This represents the derivative of the position vector with respect to time. If you differentiate the velocity vector, you get the acceleration vector. So the acceleration vector is the derivative of the velocity vector. You can rewrite this as a V squiggle with the dot, which represents the derivative of the velocity vector with respect to time. Alternatively, to find the acceleration vector, you can find the double derivative of the position vector. So we have R squiggle with two dots on top to indicate the double derivative. So this represents the double derivative of the position vector with respect to time. Here is exam style question one. A particle P is initially at a fixed origin O. At time t equal to zero, P is projected from O and moves so that at time t seconds after projection, its position vector, R squiggle, meter relative to a fixed origin O is given by this particular vector equation. So the position vector R is equal to t cubed minus 12t in brackets I plus 4t squared minus 6t in brackets J. We have a restricted domain for t, the time, and that is t is greater than or equal to 0. Find part a, the speed of projection of p, part b, the value of t at the instant when p is moving parallel to the vector j. So let's start off with part a. So we want the speed of projection. Ladies and gents, the speed of projection is the initial speed. So this implies that we're trying to calculate the initial speed. So if we want to calculate the initial speed, we're trying to calculate the magnitude of the velocity vector when time is equal to zero. Now, to find the velocity vector, we need to differentiate the position vector. So the velocity vector is given by the derivative of the position vector. So now we're going to differentiate the position vector. The derivative of t cubed is 3t squared minus the derivative of 12t is 12 in brackets i plus open bracket the derivative of 4t squared is 8t minus the derivative of 6t is 6 meters per second so that there is my velocity vector equation now we're going to substitute t equal to 0 so when t is equal to 0, the velocity vector is equal to minus 12i plus minus 6j. So plus or minus becomes minus, so I can just write minus 6j meters per second. So now we're going to calculate the magnitude of this velocity vector. The magnitude of this velocity vector is given by square root i component squared plus j component squared. So we can put this into our calculator and if we do this we get that the magnitude of the velocity vector is equal to 6 root 5 meters per second. And to three significant figures this is 13.4 meters per second. Let's move on to part B. The value of t at the instant when p is moving parallel to j. So we have that p is moving 
parallel to the vector j. So if I draw a coordinate grid, we know that the horizontal axis represents the i-axis and the vertical axis represents the j-axis. So we want the particle to move parallel to j. So the velocity vector is parallel to the vector j. It's in the same direction. This implies that the i component of the velocity vector has to equal 0. So i component of the velocity vector has to equal 0. Now we've got the velocity vector, ladies and gents. Here is the vector equation. So we take the i component, which is 3t squared minus 12, and we set that equal to 0. Now we can solve for t. 3t squared is equal to 12. t squared is equal to 12 divided by 3, which is 4. And so t is equal to the positive square root of 4. Remember, time is positive. Over here, we have t is greater than or equal to 0. So we take the positive square root. This gives us t equal to 2 seconds. Hence, the value of t at the instant when p is moving parallel to the vector j is t equal to 2 seconds. Moving on to part c. Find the position vector of p at the instant when p is moving parallel to j. So when p is moving parallel to j, when p is moving parallel to j, this implies that t is equal to 2. This was calculated in part b of the question. So we want the position vector of p when t is equal to 2. When t is equal to 2, the position vector of p will be r squiggle equal to, we substitute t equal 2 into this vector equation. So we have 2 cubed minus 12 times 2, square bracket i, plus 4 multiplied by 2 squared minus 6 multiplied by 2, square bracket j. So we can put this into our calculator. And if we do this, we end up with the following result. Our squiggle is equal to minus 16i plus 4j meter. So ladies and gents, the position vector of p at the instant when p is moving parallel to j, in other words, when t is equal to 2, is given by r squiggle equal to minus 16i plus 4j meters. Moving on to the final part of exam style question 1. The motion of the particle is due to it being acted on by a single variable force F squiggle newtons. Part D, given that the mass of the particle is 0.5 kg, find the magnitude of F squiggle when t is equal to 5 seconds. Ladies and gents, by Newton's second law, we know that F is equal to ma. So the force vector F is equal to m multiplied by the acceleration vector a. Now the mass of the particle is 0.5 kg. So this implies that the force vector is given by 0.5 multiplied by the acceleration vector. Now to find the acceleration vector, ladies and gents, we have to differentiate the velocity vector. This is my velocity vector equation. I'm going to differentiate this with respect to t. So the acceleration vector is equal to the derivative of 3t squared is 6t. Uh, we know that minus 12 differentiates to 0, so I can put i here, plus the derivative of 8t is 8. Uh, we know that minus 6 differentiates to 0, so I can put j over here. I don't need to include the bracket, so I can just write 6ti plus 8j meters per second per second. Right, so that's my acceleration vector. I can put it back into Newton's second law. So the force vector f is given by 0.5 multiplied by this particular acceleration vector. 6ti plus 8j. Okay, so we're going to multiply this and we get that the force vector f is equal to 6t multiplied by 0 0.5 is 3t 
and we can put i there. And 0 0.5 multiplied by 8 is 4. And we could put j there. Newtons. Now when t is equal to 5, the force vector f is equal to 3 multiplied by 5, i plus 4, j, newtons. So my force vector f is equal to 15i plus 4j newtons. Right, so that's my force vector. We want to find the magnitude, okay, of this force vector. So the magnitude of the force vector is equal to square root i component squared plus j component squared. Okay, so we can put this into our calculator and we get square root 241 newtons. In mechanics, we usually round to two significant figures or three significant figures. So if I take this and I round to three significant figures, I get 15.5 newtons to three significant figures. And that there, ladies and gents, completes part D of the question. The magnitude of the force vector when t is equal to 5 seconds is 15.5 newtons to 3 significant figures. Here is exam style question 2. A particle p moves in a horizontal plane. At time t seconds, the position vector of p's r squiggle meters relative to a fixed origin o, where r squiggle is given by this vector equation involving time t. t is greater than or equal to 0, c is a positive constant. When t is equal to 1.5 seconds, the speed of p is 15 meters per second. Part A, find the value of c. So let's have a look at part A. We know that when t is equal to 1.5 seconds, the speed of p is equal to the magnitude of the velocity vector, and this is given by 15 meters per second. So first of all, we need to find the velocity vector. To find the velocity vector, ladies and gents, we have to differentiate the position vector. So we've got the derivative of the position vector with respect to time. So the velocity vector will equal the derivative of 18t is 18 minus the derivative of 4t cubed, which is 12t squared, plus the derivative of ct squared is 2ct, J. Now, when t is equal to 1.5 seconds, the velocity vector is equal to 18 minus 12 in bracket 1.5 squared plus 2c in bracket 1.5. And then we stick in the i and j. So we're going to calculate this velocity vector. So if I put this into my calculator, I get that the velocity vector will equal minus 9i plus 3cj meters per second. So the magnitude of this velocity vector must equal 15 meters per second. So using the fact that the magnitude of the velocity vector is equal to 15, we can generate an equation involving c. Okay, so this implies that the square root i component squared plus j component squared, this must equal 15. So we can clean up what we have inside the square root. Minus 9 squared is just 81, plus 3c whole squared is 9c squared, equal to 15. Right, to get rid of the square root, we need to square both sides. So 81 plus 9c squared is equal to 15 squared, which is 225. We can take the 81 to the right-hand side. So we get 9c squared is equal to 225 take away 81, which is 144. Hence, c squared is equal to 144 divided by 9, which is 16. c must equal plus or minus square root 16. This gives us 4 or minus 4. However, we need to go back to the technicality of the question. C is a positive constant, 
So we reject minus 4 and we take C equal 4 to be our final answer. So for part A, the value of C is 4. Let's move on to part B. The acceleration of P when T is equal to 1.5 seconds. Firstly, when C is equal to 4, our velocity vector is given by 18 minus 12t squared i plus 2 multiplied by 4, which is 8tj. To find the acceleration vector, we need to differentiate the velocity vector with respect to time. Derivative of 18 is 0, derivative of minus 12t squared will be minus 24t. Plus, derivative of 8t is 8, and then we stick in our i and j as well. So, meters per second per second. We want to find the acceleration of p when t is equal to 1.5 seconds. So, when t is equal to 1.5 seconds, the acceleration of p is equal to minus 24 multiplied by 1.5 plus 8. And we've got i and j as well. Okay, so we're going to put this into our calculator. So if I put this into my calculator, I get A equal minus 36i plus 8j meters per second per second. So the acceleration of P when T is equal to 1.5 seconds is minus 36i plus 8j meters per second per second. Notice that we did not calculate the magnitude because in the question it does not say find the magnitude. It just says find the acceleration. And so we have to keep our answer in vector form. And that there, ladies and gents, completes exam style question two and this teaching video. If you found this video useful, please don't forget to leave a comment, leave a like, turn on the notification bell so that you receive notifications every time I upload teaching videos. And please don't forget to subscribe.